The history of Roman and Byzantine domes traces the architecture of domes throughout the ancient Roman Empire and its medieval continuation, today called the Byzantine Empire. Domes were important architectural elements in both empires and had widespread influence on contemporary and later styles, from Russian and Ottoman architecture to the Italian Renaissance and modern revivals. The domes were customarily hemispherical, although octagonal and segmented shapes are also known, and they developed in form, use, and structure over the centuries. Early examples rested directly on the rotunda walls of round rooms and featured a central oculus for ventilation and light. Pendentives became common in the Byzantine period, provided support for domes over square spaces. Early wooden domes are known only from a literary source, but the use of wooden formwork, concrete, and unskilled labor enabled domes of monumental size in the late Republic and early Imperial period, such as the so-called Temple of Mercury, Bath Hall at Baiae. Nero introduced the dome into Roman palace architecture in the first century and such rooms served as state banqueting halls, audience rooms, or throne rooms. The Pantheon's Dome, the largest and most famous example, was built of concrete in the 2nd century and may have served as an audience hall for Hadrian. Imperial mausolei, such as the Mausoleum of Diocletian, were domed beginning in the 3rd century. Some smaller domes were built with a technique of using ceramic tubes in place of wooden centering for concrete or structure embedded in the concrete, but light brick became the preferred building material over the course of the 4th and 5th centuries. Brick ribs allowed for a thinner structure and facilitated the use of windows in the supporting walls, replacing the need for an oculus as a light source. Christian baptistries and shrines were domed in the 4th century, such as the Lateran Baptistery and the likely wooden dome over the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Constantine's octagonal palace church in Antioch may have been the precedent for similar buildings for centuries afterward. The first domed basilica may have been built in the 5th century, with a church in southern Turkey being the earliest proposed example. But the 6th century architecture of Justinian made domed church architecture standard throughout the Roman East. His Hagia Sophia and Church of the Holy Apostles inspired copies in later centuries. Cruciform churches with domes at their crossings, such as the churches of Hagia Sophia in Thessaloniki and St. Nicholas at Myra, were typical of 7th and 8th century architecture embracing a dome with barrel vaults on four sides became the standard structural system. Domes over window drums of cylindrical or polygonal shape were standard after the 9th century. In the empire's later period, smaller churches were built with smaller domes, normally less than 6 meters after the 10th century. Exceptions include the 11th century domed octagons of Hosios Lucas and Nemoni, and the 12th century Cora church, among others. The cross in square plan, with a single dome at the crossing or five domes in a quincunx pattern, as at the Church of St. Pantelimon, was the most popular type from the 10th century until the fall of Constantinople in 1453. Overview Rounded arches, vaults, and domes distinguish Roman architecture from that of ancient Greece and were facilitated by the use of concrete and brick. By varying the weight of the aggregate material in the concrete, the weight of the concrete could be altered, allowing lighter layers to be laid at the top of concrete domes. But concrete domes also required expensive wooden formwork, also called shuttering, to be built and kept in place during the curing process, which would usually have to be destroyed to be removed. Formwork for brick domes need not be kept in place as long and could be more easily reused. Roman domes were used in baths, villas, palaces, and tombs. Oculi were common features. They were customarily hemispherical in shape and partially or totally concealed on the exterior. In order to buttress the horizontal thrust of a large hemispherical masonry dome, the supporting walls were built up beyond the base to at least the haunches of the dome and the dome was then also sometimes covered with a conical or polygonal roof. 
a variety of other shapes, including shallow saucer domes, segmental domes, and ribbed domes were also sometimes used. The audience halls of many imperial palaces were domed. Domes were also very common over polygonal garden pavilions. Construction and development of domes declined in the West with the decline and fall of the Western portion of the empire. The term, Byzantine, invented in 1557 by historian Hieronymus Wolff, became popular in the 19th century and is used to refer to the medieval Eastern Roman Empire with its capital at Constantinople, the former town of Byzantine. In the Byzantine period, a supporting structure of four arches with pendentives between them allowed the spaces below domes to be opened up. Pendentives allowed for weight loads to be concentrated at just four points on a more practical square plan, rather than a circle. Domes were important elements of baptistries, churches, and tombs. They were normally hemispherical and had, with occasional exceptions, window drums. Roofing for domes ranged from simple ceramic tile to more expensive, more durable, and more form-fitting lead sheeting. The domes and drums typically incorporated wooden tension rings at several levels to resist deformation in the mortar and allow for faster construction. Metal clamps between stone cornice blocks, metal tie rods, and metal chains were also used to stabilize domed buildings. Timber belts at the bases of domes helped to stabilize the walls below them during earthquakes, but the domes themselves remained vulnerable to collapse. The surviving ribbed or pumpkin dome examples in Constantinople are structurally equivalent and those techniques were used interchangeably, with the number of divisions corresponding to the number of windows. Aided by the small scale of churches after the 6th century, such rib domes could be built with formwork only for the ribs. Pumpkin domes could have been built in self-supporting rings and small domical vaults were effectively cobbled, dispensing with formwork altogether. Late Republic and Early Imperial Period Roman baths played a leading role in the development of domed construction in general, and monumental domes in particular. Modest domes in baths dating from the 2nd and 1st centuries BC are seen in Pompeii, in the cold rooms of the term Stabiana and the term Del Foro. These domes are very conical in shape, similar to those on an Assyrian bar relief found in Nineveh. At a Roman era tepidarium in Cabrera de Mar, Spain, a dome has been identified from the middle of the 2nd century BC that used a refined version of the parallel arch construction found in the earlier Hellenistic bath dome in Sicily. According to Vitruvius, the temperature and humidity of domed warm rooms could be regulated by raising or lowering bronze discs located under an oculus. Domes were particularly well suited to the hot rooms of baths circular in plan to facilitate even heating from the walls. However, the extensive use of domes did not occur before the 1st century AD. Varro's book on agriculture describes an aviary with a wooden dome decorated with the eight winds that is compared by analogy to the eight winds, depicted on the Tower of the Winds, which was built in Athens at about the same time. This aviary with its wooden dome may represent a fully developed type. Wooden domes in general would have allowed for very wide spans. Their earlier use may have inspired the development and introduction of large stone domes of previously unprecedented size. Complex wooden forms were necessary for dome centering and support during construction, and they seem to have eventually become more efficient and standardized over time. The mortar and aggregate of Roman concrete was built up in horizontal layers laid by hand against wooden form work with the thickness of the layers, determined by the length of the workday, rather than being poured into a mold as concrete is today. Roman concrete domes were thus built similarly to the earlier corbel domes of the Mediterranean region, although they have different structural characteristics. The aggregate used by the Romans was often rubble, but lightweight aggregate in the upper levels served to reduce stresses. Empty vases and jugs could be hidden inside to reduce weight. 
The dry concrete mixtures used by the Romans were compacted with rams to eliminate voids, and added animal blood acted as a water reducer. Because Roman concrete was weak in tension, it did not provide any structural advantage over the use of brick or stone. But, because it could be constructed with unskilled slave labor, it provided a constructional advantage and facilitated the building of large-scale domes. Domes reached monumental size in the Roman imperial period, although imprints of the formwork itself have not survived. Deformations from the ideal of up to 22 cm at the so-called Temple of Mercury in Baiae suggest a centering of eight radiating frames, with horizontal connectors supporting radial formwork for the shallow dome. The building, actually a concrete bath hall dating from the age of Augustus, has the first known large Roman dome. There are five openings in the dome, a circular oculus and four square skylights. The dome has a span of 21.5 meters and is the largest known dome built before that of the Pantheon. It is also the earliest preserved concrete dome, 1st century. While there are earlier examples in the Republican period and early imperial period, the growth of domed construction increased under Emperor Nero and the Flavians in the 1st century AD, and during the 2nd century. Centrally planned halls become increasingly important parts of palace and palace villa layouts beginning in the 1st century, serving as state banqueting halls, audience rooms, or throne rooms. Formwork was arranged either horizontally or radially, but there is not enough surviving evidence from the 1st and 2nd centuries to say what was typical. The opulent palace architecture of the Emperor Nero marks an important development. There is evidence of a dome in his Domus Transitoria at the intersection of two corridors, resting on four large piers, which may have had an oculus at the center. In Nero's Domus Aurea, or Golden House, planned by Severus and Sella, the walls of a large octagonal room transition to an octagonal domical vault, which then transitions to a dome with an oculus. This is the earliest known example of a dome in the city of Rome itself. The Domus Aurea was built after 64 AD and the dome was over 13 meters in diameter. This octagonal and semicircular dome is made of concrete and the oculus is made of brick. The radial walls of the surrounding rooms buttress the dome, allowing the octagonal walls directly beneath it to contain large openings under flat arches and for the room itself to be unusually well lit, because there is no indication that mosaic or other facing material had ever been applied to the surface of the dome. It may have been hidden behind a tent-like fabric canopy like the pavilion tents of Hellenistic rulers. The oculus is unusually large, more than two-fifths the span of the room, and it may have served to support a lightweight lantern structure or tholus, which would have covered the opening. Circular channels on the upper surface of the oculus also support the idea that this lantern, perhaps itself domed, was the rotating dome referred to in written accounts. According to Suetonius, the Domus Aurea had a dome that perpetually rotated on its base in imitation of the sky. It was reported in 2009 that newly discovered foundations of a round room may be those of a rotating domed dining hall. Also reported in contemporary sources is a ceiling over a dining hall in the palace fitted with pipes so that perfume could rain from the ceiling. Although it is not known whether this was a feature of the same dome, the expensive and lavish decoration of the palace caused such scandal that it was abandoned soon after Nero's death and public buildings such as the Baths of Titus and the Colosseum were built at the site. The only intact dome from the reign of Emperor Domitian is a 16.1 meter wide example in what may have been a nymphium at his villa at Albano. It is now the Church of Santa Maria della Rotunda. Domitian's 92 AD Domus Augustana established the apsidal semi-dome as an imperial motif. Square chambers in his palace on the Palatine Hill used pendentives to support domes. His palace contained three domes resting over walls with alternating apses and rectangular openings. 
An octagonal domed hall existed in the domestic wing. The dining hall of this private palace, called the Carnacea Jovis, or Dining Hall of Jupiter, contained a rotating ceiling like the one Nero had built, but with stars set into the simulated sky.